So the 2020 MLB draft is in the books. Five rounds over two nights, now a thing of the past. 162 new faces, 60 faces coming to the next level. Teams hoping that influx of talent pays off in the long run. The Tigers got it going on day one, taking Arizona State. With number one, of course, there's Spencer Torkelson, Orioles. Surprising everybody going with Heston Kerstad at two. And then Austin Martin falling to five to the Blue Jays. But take a look at some of these draft grades here by our R.J. Anderson. Handing out a lot of 4.0s there. The White Sox, interesting to see there. Uh, the Rockies landed three players in the top 50. Royals, no hesitation there. Getting Asa Lacey after slipping out of that top three. And the Pirates coming away with also a top 50 pick there, along with Nick Gonzalez to round out their draft. All right, to help break us down a little bit, the man himself, R.J. Anderson, behind those graph ratings there. Uh, positive feedback from you with some of those te teams over the two days. I want to take a look at the Mets, though. One of those teams that was on that list, coming away with three guys in pre uh, Crow uh, Armstrong, JT Jen, and Isaiah Green. Potential good return in the future. Is that why they got the A there? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the Mets took a similar approach last draft. Very bold to take these guys who are not necessarily signable and figure out a way to sign them. And this year, they basically planned their draft around three players. Pro Armstrong, uh, JT Ginn, and then Isaiah Green. If they can sign all three, they're getting potentially a dynamite center fielder with leadoff capabilities, a potential top 10 pick had he not gotten injured, and then another center fielder with power potential. So, you know, Brody Van Wagenen's tenure as GM hasn't necessarily been successful in the whole. He's been very bold when it comes to the draft, and so far it's paid off for him. All right, for the Blue Jays, probably going to impact now, taking the number one prospect in Austin Martin alone. This would give them the A, but they're also adding a little more to bump up that grade to that. Yeah, I mean, Austin Martin was the number one prospect on my board. I love him. I think he's just the best player in the draft. But the Blue Jays didn't stop there. They also got C.J. Van Eyck and Frasso. Look, both of those guys check the boxes in terms of athleticism, in terms of their analytics, with their spin rates. There are some reservations with both. Van Eyck with his consistency, Frasso with his health. But there's a chance the Blue Jays walk away from this draft with three above-average contributors. That's fantastic considering their first pick was number five. So those are two A's, but everybody can't get an A in the class. We know that. The Texas Rangers not ahead of the class here, barely passing with a D. How do we get to that point for them? You know, the Rangers draft just seemed like a series of reaches that started at number 14 with Justin Foskey. Foskey probably gained as much as any here in the draft of the last two months, which is very confusing because... As we all know, no games were played over the last two months. You know, I think he's going to be a solid player. It's all about the bat with him and how you can position him defensively to cover over some of his weaknesses. He could become a very solid player, but it seems like a reach. Then their second pick, Evan Carter, he wasn't even on Baseball America's top 500 list. Now, you know, the Rangers are pretty good at this scouting. Maybe they see something there that we don't, but it just seems like they reach time and again, and that's going to ding you on draft night. So this is a different season. We know that with the season of MLB returning, we don't know when, how many games, what's going to happen. Um, and you saw in this draft, 33 of the top 100 were college guys. You don't see that too often. A lot of, not much love for high school is here. Um, but chances we'll see some of these guys that we saw taking the first and second day play this time this year. You know, I had scouts express that opinion to me, that some of these college pitchers are going to make their professional debuts this year in the major leagues. And just to give you a few who could potentially do that, I would start with Reed Detmers, who went to the Angels in the first round, Garrett Crochet, who went to the White Sox. Then I'll give you a bit of a sleeper, Cubs second round pick, Burl Caraway. He's this left-hander from Dallas Baptist. He's a pure reliever, has an insane fastball curveball combination. If he can throw a few more strikes, he has closer potential. RJ, I know with the paint is not dry on 2020 yet, but I will look ahead at 2021. Some guys you might have your eye on already. Yeah, there's two players I'm going to mention here, and it's convenient because they both go to the same school. Vanderbilt's one of the best programs in college baseball, and next year they could potentially have a number one and number two picks. Jack Leiter, that's Al Leiter's son, he can touch the upper 90s with his fastball. He has this curveball with a ton of depth. He's tightened up his slider. And then Kumar Rocker. And if you know Kumar Rocker's name, it's probably because of the 19 strikeout no hitter he threw against Duke last year. A big guy, big fastball slider combination. Both of those guys have front of the rotation potential. And don't be surprised if they go number one and number two next June.
There's something about those Vandy guys always popping up when it comes to draft day. We just saw that with Austin Martin there. Those two possibly on their way as well. RJ Anderson, appreciate your time, man. Take care. Of course. Thank you for having me. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.